I was fortunate enough to meet up with Wendell from Level 1 Techs. And just to reiterate, he's not my dad. And after extensive testing, we were able to come up with a system that meets my needs for both video editing and for gaming. And I finally built it. Well, almost, but we'll get to that. Hi, I'm Gardner, the Linux Gamer, and here's my brand new Office PC. Now, I don't know if I've told you guys this or not, but I like to have a naming scheme for my devices. Like, my laptop is called Cisco, my phone is Adama, my server is Picard. Are you noticing a trend here? <sighs> so, I was thinking about naming this machine Dargo, because, well, Farscape might be the greatest sci-fi series ever. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, we'll fight this out in the comments. But let's talk about the heart of this machine, the motherboard. It's an X370 SLI Plus ATX board from MSI that Wendell hooked me up with. It's by far the nicest motherboard I've ever owned. It has a ton of expansion capability, plus room for a bunch of storage, with an M.4 slot as well as six SATA ports. It's an AM4 socket board, and that's where we get to talking about the processor, the Ryzen 7 1800X 8-core, clocking in at 3.6 GHz. It can turbo out of the box up to 4 GHz, this processor didn't come with its own cooler, so that's why I bought the Master Liquid 120 from Cooler Master. It's understated, yet definitely adds to the character of this machine. I outfitted this build with a pair of 8GB G-Skill Ripjaw 5 series DDR4 memory modules. They clock in at 3200 MHz, and I'm pretty pleased. Though I think I will be adding another set of these to the build before I'm completely satisfied. Powering it all is a 550 watt EVGA Supernova 80 plus gold modular power supply that has helped tremendously with cable management. I can leave out the power cables that I don't need and it keeps the inside of my case looking sane. Oh yeah, the case. The case is the Fractal Design R6 mid-tower with a tempered glass side panel. It's quite snazzy, and I chose this one because of how striking it looked when I saw it in person at the Level 1 headquarters. Now you might be wondering, where's the GPU? Is it integrated? No, uh, uh, I'm using my old NVIDIA GTX 970 until I can pick up a Vega 56 for a reasonable, or at the very least, a not insane price. Shipping was a breeze, except for with Newegg, which always seems to take nearly two weeks to ship stuff to me for some reason. On the flip side, Outlet PC is always stellar. Theirs were the first packages to arrive, everything worked flawlessly, and shipping costs were reasonable. The build process was super easy this go around, I have nothing to report except <laughs> except for trying to figure out which set of hardware I was supposed to use for my CPU cooler, because it came with so much extra hardware, oh my god. <sighs> now I've been using Dargo for a few weeks, and yes that's going to stick, and I've edited the last three videos on it. I have to say I'm quite pleased, though there's definitely room for improvement. A new graphics card and probably more RAM are in order, as well as maybe a new distro? We'll see how things go, but you can find a link to this build on PC Parts Picker down in the description. I want to say thanks to Wendell one more time, just because he was such a gracious and generous host. Um, you know, I asked him for a little bit of help and he said, come on down and you can test all of our equipment and all this stuff. And so, yeah, Wendell, you're the man. Um, thank you so much. You, you, It meant a lot to me. Uh, I had a tremendous time and uh, let's do it again sometime. But I want to hear from you. Have you built a new PC recently? How should I stress test Dargo? Leave me a comment and let me know, or hit me up on Twitter at the Linux Gamer. If you like the work that I do, you can support the show over on Patreon or LibrePay, or you can hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.